In March 2021, the UK government's integrated review ushered in a new era for the British Army. A stronger British Army, using leading edge technology to wage 21st century warfare. This is Thayer, the Army's ambitious digital transformation program. Thayer is transforming the Army's capability to make it faster, leaner, and more efficient. Thayer is a, uh, what I would describe as an ambitious but critical transformation program uh, for the Army, which will uh, take us from a relatively analog approach to our, our activity at the moment, absolutely into uh, the digital uh, space. So the integrated review, of course, which we ha has just been announced, uh, reduced uh, some of our numbers within the army, slightly on a promise in terms of what technology offers us in the future. At the moment now, we are very much refocused on what the capability offers, and that for us is the future, very much links machine and the person, so manned on man teaming. It brings in artificial intelligence and it brings in uh, machine learning. It is inevitable that soldiering will change and modern warfare in the next 10 years may look very different. But some fundamentals remain. The nature of conflict uh, remains, i.e. it is frightening, it is visceral and it is bloody. Uh, and nothing that technology brings to bear will ultimately take that away. But what is changing, I would suggest, is the character of conflict. It is no longer an issue about tank versus tank. Thea is about artificial intelligence, machine learning and autonomy. It's about quantum computing, cyber insecurity, synthetic environments, but also augmented reality and analytics. You know, we have got a lot of data out there to play with. I think we've missed the point. Yes, it's the new oil, it's the new you know, oil in the, in the machine, it's the new black gold, whatever you want to call it. On a, in an operational sense, helping commanders make the right decisions at the right time with the right amount of information is the way to win. Defence Digital is leading the way when it comes to the digital backbone the data highway that runs right from the individual soldier all the way back to HQ or bayonet to base. When it comes to outcompeting an adversary, it's about acting quickly, but also acting on the best data. Speed is of the essence. And that is also true of the rapid digital transformation the army is undergoing while also recognising that a lot of its capital equipment is legacy equipment, some of which has been in service for decades. That is why an open architecture is so important. We are building an open architecture which enables us to inject new digital technologies, predominantly applications, artificial intelligence tools. We are paving the way for those in the future but we have to do the, the hard yards of the, the back-end work, which is about open up architectures, own the design, and be able to innovate from that. It's about really good control of your data, and it's about having an infrastructure, including a hosting environment, which enables the power of those digital services. So we have to find a way to get the best of all the technology, but at the same time recognise the fundamental human nature of, uh, of an army. For an army where you might ask teams of people to go into war together, where they're putting their lives on the line and where they're fighting for each other's lives, it is very important for them to be able to operate and function as a team, and that is ultimately a very human endeavour. And as much as technology enables people to work remotely, to be able to exploit the power of data, we must never forget the human nature of warfare.